Here on RT, the diplomatic talks are entering their third day between the Russians and the Americans in Geneva uh, concerning the Syrian crisis and also the fact that uh, the UN inspector's report is due to be released on the uh, matter of the chemical weapons attack in Damascus last month. Uh, we're due to get the results of that report very soon. To discuss all the developments now, we're joined live from the US by Lawrence Freeman from the Executive Intelligence Review magazine. Lawrence, there's so much at stake with these diplomatic talks now. Do you think Russia's initiative could actually go ahead? It's quite possible. The Russian uh, leadership and uh, President Putin uh, have pulled off a brilliant flanking maneuver. And uh, I think there's a lot of people who are very uh, provoked by his uh, op-ed in the New York Times the other day. So there is the possibility, because the other factor is that President Obama uh, is in great trouble. Uh, his presidency is in real trouble, and it could be going down. Uh, he's in, he may not make it through the rest of his term. The American people were outraged about this war, and they basically bombarded their congressmen and women 100 to 1 uh, in telegrams and calls and emails against this war. So he was forced to back off on a policy that uh, very uh, old, a week ago he was committed to launch a bombing campaign. And I think the Russian leadership and the American people have boxed him in. It's, you can't tell what's going to happen because there's so many different factors. But we're clearly in a much improved geometry than we were a week ago. So Obama's political career at stake. What about the Russian plan, though? Just if it is agreed on, is that not at stake as well? We're dealing with a country in crisis in a civil war. Will it really be that easy to implement? I don't know how difficult it will be, but I would suspect that the Russians would not have made this offer unless they had some indication that they could actually uh, carry it out. Now, there are already people in the U.S. who are attacking this, and there's a whole grouping of warmongers in both the Democrat and Republican Party who are telling Obama to forget this deal and uh, begin a bombing campaign. But I think that the, the Russians right now are in a very uh, advantageous position to try to push this through. Uh, but you have a lot of actors involved. There's a lot of influences. Look, there's a whole reality behind this, which is you have a complete collapse of the transatlantic financial system which is bearing down upon uh, the European countries and England and the United States, which could lead to war. You could have war by miscalculation and stubbornness and old habits like we had with World War I. And also Obama is prone to war. He, he's not a peace man, he's a warmonger, as we saw in uh, Libya. And this war would be a much more dangerous war that could lead to a general war uh, with Russia and China which would turn out to be a population reduction war, because you would be killing uh, millions of people if you got to the point of using nuclear weapons. So uh, this situation is very dangerous, it's very fluid, but it's a much better position than we were in seven to 10 days ago. What about the UN report over that chemical attack? The results are very soon. What impact could those results have on the current very delicate situation now? Well. The indications are that the report will be out Monday, and uh, this depends how the evidence is slanted, uh, what interpretations you could draw from it. Uh, we just, my organization, EIR, just put together a fact sheet indicating that the Syrian opposition, which is supported by Saudi Arabia and al-Qaeda, has been uh, accused of using chemical weapons and sarin gas in particular, going all the way back to March of this year. So exactly who used what and what chemical were used, these are very delicate questions. And sometimes the same facts can be easily misinterpreted because uh, you don't have an understanding of what the policy is behind them. As far as I could see, uh, President Assad had no reason to use chemical weapons. He has the upper hand in the war. So you have to start from the question, who benefits, qui bono, and the opposition uh, the Syrian Free Army, so-called, backed by Saudi Arabia, has more, had more of a reason to use chemical weapons to draw in Western intervention than President Assad did. So motivation 
should always be a factor in examining these questions. Live from Baltimore, Lawrence Freeman from the Executive Intelligence Review magazine. Thanks very much indeed for your perspective on this.